What's up guys? Takedown here back with another episode of Storytime. Today is episode 13. Yes, lucky number 13. And today we're going to be talking about volunteering and let me explain that really quick first. So as you guys know, because I've mentioned in the past, I live in Canada. More specifically, I live in Ontario and one of the uh, rules or terms to graduate high school is you have to have 40 hours, at least 40 hours of volunteer hours um, submitted into the school before graduation. So you have until, you have from the ninth grade to the 12th grade to get these 40 plus hours of volunteer work. So that's working at food banks or any anything like that. And the school has a bunch of opportunities to get your hours too. Um, but it's mandatory that you get these 40 hours to graduate. And when I was in high school, a lot of people didn't believe that's an actual thing and they never got their hours. And then when it came time to graduate, I know at least two people um, that were supposed to be graduating that didn't graduate because they didn't get their hours. And to me, it's disappointing because we knew ahead of time. I got mine done by the 11th grade, but a lot of people just didn't believe that they could be held back for this reason. And here in Ontario, you can. So if you are if you live in Ontario, I recommend doing your 40 hours because you're going to regret it in the long run. But with that being said, also when I was in high school, a lot of people would fake their hour sheets. They would either know somebody who knows somebody who knows somebody and they would get their sheets filled out and they'd be fake. They never did any volunteer work, but they'd submit it and the school would accept it because the school's not going to know if they actually did it, if they have the actual person's signature on it. So a lot of the times it was fake. It wasn't legit hours. So a lot of people I know got their hours that way. I unfortunately didn't. I got mine the right way. Um, and I understand where the school this the school board and the Ontario government's coming from it's to help uh, the younger kids the younger people volunteer give a helping hand so I respect that a little bit but then again with so many people faking it it's it's kind of pointless in my opinion but anyways this video I'm going to be talking more about um, my experiences volunteering so to start things off I'll start with some of the smaller ones um, I remember one day we went to a farm me and uh, another friend we were there for six to eight hours, so that's the amount of hours we got that day alone. So that was pretty good. Uh, but we were working at a farm, doing heavy work, and the school almost didn't accept it. And we were the last people that were allowed to work at a farm just because technically the farmers could have hired somebody and actually paid them for this work. So it's not actual volunteer work, even though we weren't getting paid. Uh, we considered it to be volunteer work, but the school didn't because they could have paid somebody for the same job we were doing. So... I understand that, but what we were doing is moving big patio stones in one of the cages for the animals, so it was heavy work. To me, it shouldn't have been kids doing it, because at the time we were like 10th grade or something like that, which is stupid to have us doing it. And then moving bales of hay. So that was the other thing, and they were heavy bales. I didn't know some bales of hay could be that heavy. They were heavy, and we did that for that whole time. Another one of the experiences I did for Canada Day is two years two years in a row we would get four hours each year so we did it two years in a row and we would go to the Canada Day, Canada Day event uh in Iroquois so that's that's close to that's the next town over from where I live that's where I went to high school and we would run the kids toy or the kids event because it wasn't like my home like in my town where we had actual people come in they had volunteers do it so we would run the uh, kids events so like um mini putt i guess was one of them uh catch i, I can't remember half the stuff but i know i was in charge of the one where you'd throw uh bean bags and try to get it in or try to get it past or try to get it in a hula hoop every year they changed it so that's why i can't remember exactly and I remember they used to give me so much crap because mine would be the one people would win because mine was the easiest to win. And they set the rules. Like we come, they're like, this is how far back they have to stand. This age group has to stand here. This age group has to stand here. This is how much they win if they get it in. And people would dominate. So then they came down to me like, hey, you're giving too much stuff away. And I'm sitting there thinking, number one, all the prizes are from the dollar store. It's not costing you too much. You have about 50 items from the dollar store. And they're cheap stuff. So you spent, what, $50? You don't want to give it away? What are you going to do? Throw it out at the end of it? Like, shut up and just 
give the kids gifts. It makes them feel good because they're actually winning something that you guys planned. It's like you don't want the kids to win. But we did that two years in a row, me and a group of friends. Every year it was somebody, like a group of different friends, but we'd always have the same few. Um, I went to a farm again. This experience was horrifying and makes me, I really hate farms. I don't like farm animals. I don't like any of that. So I know I'll never be a farmer. And to me, that's a good thing. I, I just don't like it. But we went, we didn't know what we were getting into. One of the friend's dads set up a thing at a farm and the three of us went and we each got a water bottle and we knew we were supposed to be there about eight hours. And little did we know we we're actually going to be in the hot, it was one of the hottest days in the summer that we were going to be in a field. And he was actually going to be nice and he was going to double the hours. So whatever, if we earned it, if we only worked an hour, we were going to get two hours. So he was going to double up the hours just because of how much work this is. But we never even finished the day. We just got an hour done. So let's talk about that really quick. What it was is he drove in on a tractor. At the bucket of the tractor, we the three of us sat in it. We got into the field. We got out. And basically, he clear-cut a field. He wants his new field. And he would drive in the bucket. And we were supposed to pick up these rocks, sticks. Well, most mostly rocks because sticks can deteriorate on their own. But big boulders tossed in the bucket. They were heavy because it was a new field, so it's a lot of crap. We had, or one of the kids had heat stroke and was complaining, so the guy got all pissed off and we were like, no, we're done. We're not doing this shit. So we ended up going home or to their house, and that's where we stayed at the end of the day. But he drove us back, and where he drove slow at first, he was flooring it. And remember, we're smashing our heads off the back of the bucket like he's flooring it back because he's pissed. He doesn't get free labor for the day so I mean I understand where he's coming from but we didn't know what we were getting into so we couldn't do that and then a majority of my volunteer hours I actually got at the local food bank this is where I get the opinion or my opinion of whether food banks are good or bad because a lot of the food that comes in because of the government we can't hand out so the volunteers actually get it so that's why a lot of people in my hometown volunteer um because they know there's a great great possibility they'll get a lot of free food because it's stuff we just can't hand out. Um, because the regulations, what people can get, is limited now. And I hate that. And that was a few years ago. That was when I was in the 11th grade. So now it's probably way worse. So stuff like they used to buy a big jar of peanut butter. And they would split it up into little bottles or little... Uh, things and we they used to package it then all of a sudden you weren't allowed to do that you're not allowed to touch the people's food even though we're all like it was all sanitary like it was strict we had to the bottles had to be bleached and cleaned out that way we had to wear gloves we had to wear ha hair nets I, I barely did any of this stuff but I know there was a few times I had to um, stuff like shampoo like we're they were forced to buy small if we're gonna hand it out we have to hand out the whole thing to somebody so we were forced to buy the small packages of stuff, which in the end costs a lot more. Like you can get a big one, it's one price, but the small ones equal out to a lot more. So the food banks are paying a lot more for this stuff. You can't split up a bottle into smaller things. You can't repackage into smaller quantities, which really sucks. But the major thing I did was, it was me and my aunt, she would wash um, the bottles in the bleach. I would rinse them out dry them and then we'd done so we'd fill up garbage bags full and we only did it once a week two hours each week and i did at least over over half of my hours were contributed because of that so i had my aunt to thanks for that but i remember times uh there's a the bakery far away and our local moving company was the one to take all the stuff so they decided to bring it back to our food bank which is really good but none of the food from the bakery, when I say bakery, I mean sweets, so I don't know what you'd call it, but there's berries and pastry stuff and mixed up some pies some cakes. For some reason, we weren't allowed to give that out to the people. They kept a portion of it, so a few pies in that or cakes or whatever it was. The rest of it, they split up amongst all of us volunteers. I remember bags of popcorn, whenever it was close to the expiry date, local food places would give it to us. And then they distribute it to us because 
even if they even if somebody that came into the food bank that needed it if they they're only allowed so much so even though they need it we could have gave them more we weren't allowed to and i blame the government for a lot of that and that's why i don't believe a hundred percent in food banks i recommend donating myself i really would donate but it's like i would think about how i want to donate before just donating because a lot of the food that gets donated actually doesn't go out to the people that need it the way i see it if you want to donate to food banks you should donate money because they actually take that money and they purchase stuff that they actually need that they can actually distribute and give out to the people in need instead of giving them just food that you have or go out and buying food a lot of that they aren't allowed to give anymore so it's hard to do but one end I understand why, the other end I think it's pointless because it, the food's just sitting there and then it ends up going to the volunteers because it's going to be expired and then they can't give it out. But I just wanted a quick little story time video for you guys to share this experience with you. So I hope you guys did enjoy. And if you did, please leave a thumbs up and I will see you guys in the next one. Take care. Peace.